we're here with uh, Senator Corey Bernardi just to have a chat about the carbon tax rally that's taken place today. Uh, Senator Bernardi, could you just tell us a little bit about what's taken place today? Myself and Rax uh, coming down to Canberra, we couldn't get a hotel room. There was that much uh, people either for or against, I suppose, in town today for the carbon rally. Uh, what's taken place? Well, it's an extraordinary um, groundswell of uh, mainstream Australians that are campaigning against a new tax by this government. We've seen maybe 3,000 of them uh, come to Canberra today. There was sky riding, uh, no tax um, from the aeroplane. There were just people very enthused about getting active um, against what they regard as a dishonourable decision by the government. Um, people are motivated there by a number of different things. Some, you know, don't support the science on climate change. Some just think this is a bad thing to do and it's going to be ineffective. Uh, some people just regard, you know, it as a lie, uh, the no tax promise, and uh, others are just there to support what they think is a common sense view. Well, let's take the view <clears throat> for a moment that if carbon emissions actually are affecting uh, our climate, how then can Australia make such a significant difference when we're such a small percentage of emissions globally? Well, Jay, you can't. I mean, there's, there's a number of tests you have to apply here. Firstly, you know, is the climate changing? Yes, it is. Is carbon dioxide responsible for it? Well, there are those that say it is. And what would be the best policy response then? Um, a tax simply won't make any difference to it. It will penalise families, it will export jobs, but it will not actually reduce carbon dioxide emissions. And I'll tell you why. Because every industry that's affected by it um, will, uh, at some level, uh, outsource their production or uh, maybe even transfer all of their production offshore. And that will be in um, areas where there is no carbon tax, carbon dioxide tax, there are no limits on emissions, and so you could actually get a net increase in emissions because they won't be as efficient industries. Is there some sort of regulations uh, in Australia that isn't present in other countries where, so, so as you just mentioned, so say we start exporting our coal, we're really just transferring the place where those emissions uh, are occurring. That's right. Um, is there a difference in regulations in Australia compared to, say, in India or China, um, which would then have that uh, net increase that you're talking about? I, I would only say that we have a very good environmental track record compared with other nations, and uh, we operate our industry generally at the um, most efficient level, uh, more efficient certainly than many other uh, high carbon dioxide uh, emitters around the world. So. Um, I think it would be a net loss for Australia, it would be a net loss for um, families and it would be a net gain for you know, emissions internationally. Right, so let's say for example that we uh, assume that there's emissions that are occurring obviously from these uh, flights and so on and so forth. One of the largest contributors of course would be jet flights. Mm. Now uh, if we've got politicians who are jet setting around the country, now these are politicians who are advocating this cause, um, is it not a bit hypocritical for them to be jet setting around the country in these high emission planes when there's technologies that are in place like Skype and uh, so on and so forth on the internet where they could conduct a lot of these meetings uh, digitally instead of face to face? Look, there, there is a, certainly a case that those who uh, preach the loudest um, for the global warming cause or the climate change cause um, you know, could do a lot more to reduce their own uh, emissions. But politicians do have a, a, a requirement to fly. I mean, we have to get to Canberra and things of that nature. But as an interesting aside, one of the most vocal uh, environmental campaigners is, is Senator Bob Brown. When Malcolm Turnbull was uh, Environment Minister and Peter Garrett was a Shadow Environment Minister, both of their travel and emissions were eclipsed by Senator Bob Brown, mm -hmm. uh, who was the highest emitter in the Parliament, from my understanding. Um, that's quite an extraordinary record. So, Senator, you've taken a leading role in this debate. Uh, what is it that you're suggesting, now you've uh, got your views on whether carbon is indeed a, a factor in uh, climate change, what's your views in terms of the policy of what we should be doing to address uh, climate change, if at all, and uh, certainly taking into account the economic factors? Well, the coalition actually has a direct action policy and it's something that I actually sign up to. I know it's going to cost a lot of money um, because you know, anything in this area actually does cost money. But I, I support it because it's going to be of net benefit to Australia. There's, there's three aspects to it, I guess. One is, the first one is that we want to replace some carbon in the soil, and that will, or sequester carbon in the soil. That will improve 
the yields, the fertility of the soil, that's a net gain for Australian productivity. I think it's an excellent thing. Secondly, we want to promote and offer incentives for uh, more energy efficiency by industry. And I think that's a good thing too. Anything we can do to encourage industry to become more efficient is a positive for the country as well. And the third thing is we're going to plant a heck of a lot more trees. You know, trees suck in carbon dioxide and, and put out oxygen. So, you know, it does clean the atmosphere for us. And I think that's a, a net benefit too. I call them no regrets policies because even though we'll be investing in them, if, you know, the, the science of climate change is debunked at another time, you know, we've still gained from the, uh, the investment in these areas. And of course they're sustainable. Absolutely they're sustainable. So, you know, this is the difference. We, we're interested in practical results. A carbon tax in itself will not reduce emissions as we've been through. It will just make things tougher for us, every Australian. Oh, that's very good. Thank you, Senator, for your time. It's a pleasure, Jack.